Howdy folks, Kevin here. This is the second video in my series on testing a web app using WebDriver IO, kind of the real world look at getting into it. Today we're gonna to dive into component-based testing, how to add components to your page objects so that you can share common components across multiple page objects. As you can see here, we have three different files open. Our test file on the left-hand side, our landing page object in the middle, and then our generic page object on the right. And all these go together to make a single test run that checks that the landing page has a menu bar on the page. So let's start things off by adding a new test on our landing page. We're going to test that it should have a list of top posts on our page. And how we're going to check that is we're going to get the length of a non-existent posts attribute on our landing page. We're going to add that in just a second and make sure that it equals 30, that there should be 30 posts on the landing page. The next thing we're going to do, and hopefully this is a little bit familiar, is we're going to come over to our landing page object and add a post property on it that will return an array of elements matching these two class names, items underscore underscore list dot list item. And so that's going to grab all of the posts on our page. With that, we can come into our Chester app and run our test. And now you see we have a second passing test going right along. The next thing we're going to do is test the new page. The new page is like the home page, except it shows the newest articles instead of the top ranking articles. So to do that, I'm going to create a new page object. I'm going to call it new.page.js because it represents the new page. I'll copy over the landing page because it's going to be a very similar format and just update the name of the class to be new.page.js. And then I need to update my constructor to use the new URL, which is just pound slash newest. Um, you can ignore the part at the end. It kind of doesn't matter. It'll fill that in on our own. Save that file. And now I've got my new page page object. The next thing I'm going to do is create a new test file. It's going to be called new.js. It's my test for the new page. Uh, it's going to be pretty much a copy of the landing page test file. It's going to test the same things. All I really need to do is copy all the code from the landing page and change it over to new. Make sure I get the capitalization right as well. But uh, I'm going to save this as new.js and it's a brand new test ready to go using the power of page objects. I don't really have to do much to test this page. With my new test file in place, I can go ahead and run my test another time. And see, now I have four passing tests, one for the landing page and one for the new page. Now, there was one thing that bothered me about this, and that's that I have to have the get posts duplicated across my landing page and my new page object. So we can actually abstract that out by creating some, uh, a new page object called a post page. We're not going to add this to our page because not every page we're going to be testing actually has a post or a list of posts. So we want to call this a post page, a page that has multiple posts on it. And to do this, we're going to create a new page object. It's going to extend our generic page. And inside of it, we're going to copy over that post property. And uh, then we're going to go ahead and remove it from our new page and our landing page.js. And then finally, we're going to come in here and update it so that we are loading our post page. We should go ahead and save that file as post or post page.js. And so we're going to require it inside of our landing and new pages. Then we're going to extend it using uh, instead of page, we're going to extend post page, update our new page. And actually, we should get rid of the page um, object since we're not actually using that anymore. So that's how this new format looks like. And it's great because it really it reduces a bit of that code duplication, which can cause maintenance issues in the future. OK, so I've promised that this is going to be a video on components, but I actually haven't gotten to any components yet. We're going to do that with the show page test. We're going to create a new test that tests the show page which you see here, it's basically like a lot of the other pages out there, but it is for people showing Hacker News what they've worked on. We're gonna create a new test based off of our existing test. It's gonna look a lot the same. So we're gonna go in and again, update, replace new to be show, make sure we get our capitalization correct. 
And then we're going to add a third test to our list. And this test is going to verify that all the posts in the show page have show HN in the title. And to do that, we're going to do a little bit of magic here. We're going to do show page dot post dot for each. So this is going to loop through each of our posts. It's going to take that post response or whatever is stored in that array and then get the title on that post and get the text from that title and expect it to have the string show hn. We're going to save this as show.js and now we need to update our page object to allow for our post to have a title. So I'm going to very quickly create a new show.page.js. I'm going to skip through this really quick because it's exactly as before, so don't worry about it. Then I'm going to create a new component file. We haven't talked about component files, but they're very similar to page objects. The only difference is that instead of dealing with a page, you're dealing with a specific component. So the first thing we'll do is define a constructor. That constructor is going to take an element. This is not a selector, but rather an element. And um, that's going to be a WebDriver IO element reference. If you're really interested, it is a simple JSON object that has an element ID and things like that. And in our constructor, we're just gonna store that element for later use. The next thing we're gonna do is define a new property called title. And what that's going to do is it's going to it's going to look at the element and then inside of that element, it's going to find another element that it's going to have the class name of the title. Well, the title, we need to get the actual class name we want to look for. So if you look at the page, it's item underscore underscore title. So we'll come back into our component file and define that as the selector. And now we have our component. We're going to go ahead and save this in a new directory. It's going to be um, just underneath the specs uh, folder called components. And we're going to save it as post.component.js. OK, so now that we have our component file set up, let's actually put it to use. So we're going to go back to our post page and import our component using the regular um, require statement. We're going to go up to directory or up a directory to components and then come in to our post page. And now, instead of returning a direct array of WebDriver IO elements, we're going to map that array of elements to the post component, passing in the element itself. And it's going to be smart enough to infer that that's a WebDriver IO element. And we can use it when we use our this.element to get the title of the page. It's a little complicated, so we should definitely try and run these tests. Let's go ahead and give them a shot. And now all of our tests are running. We've got three different files running in parallel sessions. And you can see at the very end, we have seven passing tests, two for the home page, two for the new page, and three now for our show page. So that's a good overview of how components can be used across multiple page objects. Here, we're only using it on a single page object. But that page object is shared by other page objects. It's a little bit uh, complex in this scenario, but it really helps reduce the amount of code you have to write over the long term, especially if uh, you're testing a very large set of components that are used across many pages. You can imagine like a tab component. You would use that in many different scenarios. It's the same basic component, but you want to use it on many different pages out there. Thanks for watching, and as always, feel free to leave a comment letting me know what you think I should talk about in the next video, and check out my course at the end of this video.